Welcome to the newest installment of the Untitled Film Nerd Project. My name is Philip, and joining me as always is TJ. Hello. And for this episode, we watched Thoroughbreds. Before we get into it, spoiler warning now! If you want to avoid spoilers, skip ahead to the time code you see on the screen. So, let's get into the cast and crew rundown. This was written and directed by Corey Finley. And, amazingly enough, this was his first thing. Yeah. Uh, he, he did one short before, mm-hmm. but this is his first legitimate anything. And uh, writer-director, and when we get to initial thoughts, I will expound a little further on what I thought about his directing style. But uh, kudos for being a first-time director mm-hmm. of a future-length movie with only two credits under his belt, the short and this movie. So, you know, not too shabby. No, not bad at all. Uh, Lily was played, of course, by Anya Taylor-Joy, who is making quite a name for herself. Mm -hmm. Uh, She was in Split. I know her. I knew her right away from The Witch and also Morgan. Mm -hmm. But she was really good in Morgan. Yeah, she was very good in that. Yeah, yeah. Amanda was played by Olivia Cook, and she was in Ouija, the bad one, the quiet ones. And Bates Motel, which he has a recurring character on. And then, of course, Tim was played by Anton Yelchin. And I didn't realize he was in this and it got very sad. Oh, Very sad. Uh, Mr. Yelchin is obviously no longer with us, unfortunately. But he was in Star Trek, uh, The Green Room. Mm-hmm. Stellar performance in Odd Thomas. Mm-hmm. And to... Put it into perspective for our listeners. I've had a crush on Anton Yelchin for over a decade because I discovered him in 2007 in Charlie Bartlett, which was actually really good and he was super adorable. And it's actually a really good movie. I haven't seen that. Oh, check it out. Yeah. It's just, it's that mid 2000s adorable, quirky comedy. Yeah, I've seen the trailer. Yeah. It's on my list. Yeah, definitely. I would, yeah, definitely check it out. And that's all I have for like the main cast because there was more like peripheral characters in it, mm-hmm. like the mom, the dad, and et cetera, et cetera. But I, they've been in lots of stuff, but nothing that was significant for me to want to talk about. Um, mm-hmm. Did you have anyone else you wanted to add? No, uh, just that another thing that um, Anna Taylor Joy has coming up mm-hmm. is she is going to be in New Mutants. Oh, really? Yes, As which who? is the. Horror movie spinoff of the X Men yeah. series, but she is playing um, Magic or Mashik, however you want to pronounce it. Okay, okay. But huh. I am highly looking forward to that. Yeah, awesome. Good for her. Uh, okay, since there's nothing else to add there, let's get into our initial thoughts. Uh, on my end, for a first time director, wow. Mm-hmm. I loved the camera work in this movie. Yes. I go so far as to say I adored the camera work in this movie. Every shot was purposeful. Mm-hmm. Now, one would say that as a director, that's normal. But you like you take like a John Leonetti, who's just lazy director. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a wide shot, close shot, close shot. You know, it's just it's it's that same formula. This was using different techniques. This was using there's that saying show, don't tell. Yeah, it's very subdued. There are so many scenes where it was. Instead of seeing something, we heard it. Yes, and it was very much cued in by the music. What we were hearing was selling the scene. Mm-hmm. We, it wasn't being overly expository, I guess, where it wasn't like, and now here's Anton Yelchin walking up to the house. You know, we, just, we heard the footsteps and mm-hmm. saw the light come on, and that's all you needed to sell the scene. Mm-hmm. And with camera work, the scene that really just, I was like, dang, this is, this is cool. Other than Amanda's intro into the house, which was really well done. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they're standing in like the wine cellar area, Amanda's on the left and Lila's on the right. And they're talking in like, I have it written in my notes more specifically, but it just, the camera pans out at specific moments mm-hmm. and it does it so well that it's happen- helping to sell the scene. So I hope this guy stays in horror, like the horror-esque genre. Mm-hmm. It had a real 
kind of sacred deer feeling to it. I was going to say that when it, yeah, yeah, it very much reminded me of that. That, that kind of sterilized, we're outside of the bubble looking in. Mm-hmm. And I was just completely sold by the director's editing. And, well, he didn't edit it. If he did, then good job. But the editor, which I don't think editors ever get enough credit. And that's my fault as well, because I never named them. Uh, but his direction of the characters and the scenes were just just really well done. So uh-huh. that sold me on the movie in and of itself, beyond the amazing performances by uh, Anya and Olivia. For me, one of the things that was striking the chord with me was um, the music. It was so interesting. Yes. It was like almost tribal. Yes. And it really fit into the... Uh, Building the tension. But yeah, th- that as well. And also that really sense of unease. Because mm-hmm. they, they weren't sounds we were used to hearing in this kind of movie. So it was kind of, it made you feel like disjointed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's right away, like when uh, Amanda walks into the house, immediately you're hit with this like really interesting score. Yeah. And like some of the things that I remember, you know, you, ha- you have that drum beat going on. Mm-hmm. And then just those random, it seemed like, you know, a violin was just being slapped. Right. Yeah, yeah. With a chord. And then we also had the guttural human noises, yes. <laughs> I guess, for lack of a better word. Yes. <laughs> thrown in. So, yeah, you had like the drum beats and the weird violin noise and then like the whoopy guttural human noises. And it really just built this. One would think that it would take you out of the moment, but it didn't. Yes. And it- it was unusual, just like the main two characters were unusual. And that's probably why it worked, because what I liked about it as well was it wasn't unusual for this. It was unusual for the sake of being unusual, but it worked. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Veronica, the music, like in the middle of the movie, just got really fucking weird. Mm-hmm. And it felt, it felt like it did it for the sake of doing it. The music was really, really weird right away. And mm-hmm. it never stopped being really, really weird. And it added to that. It actually just added like an extra layer of unease because we weren't sure what's this music supposed to make me feel yeah that's what music's for it's to enhance a moment or you know help sell a moment like you know the editing Mm -hmm. this was selling what the hell (laughs) this kind of reminds me in a way of almost a modern day heavenly creatures Mm -hmm. i got that vibe even before i watched it somewhere i saw the poster i saw the two girls sitting on the couch that poster very much reminded me of Funny games. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. So when I saw that poster, I immediately got like a heavenly creatures vibe right away. Mm -hmm. And then as the movie's going, had that same kind of unease about it that heavenly creatures did. Mm -hmm. Uh, Listeners, if you haven't seen heavenly creatures, it's done by Peter Jackson and it's really good. It's really interesting. But, and as far as that goes, it kind of reminded me somewhat of Diabolique. How so? In the sense, I knew that the tension was leading to the murder. Right, right. I just wasn't sure. I just kept on getting the feeling that both girls were playing each other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was waiting for yeah someone to portray the other one. And that's what was the aspect that was kind of reminding me of Diabetes. Okay, okay. Yeah, because it had that real, what I liked the most about the movie, I think, it had that wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But you didn't know... Because in the beginning, they paint Amanda as the one who is, you know, she put her horse down and people have pictures of it and they're spreading them around. So she's seen as this like very emotionless, you know, sociopath kind of. Yeah, she had like psychopathic tendencies about her. You just see uh, Lily as, this, you know, poor, innocent victim. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, by the end of the movie, we've 180 completely. We can get to that more when we do our uh, breakdowns, but really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the story weaving and then kind of turning on itself in the end, mm-hmm. especially with like the, the scene between uh, Lily and Tim at the very end. And I think this is one of those rare cases where the fact that it's so difficult to identify with anybody mm-hmm. actually yeah. worked for the film. Yes. Because yes. even Lily's motivations were shitty, just absolutely selfish. Yeah. She was selfish. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, because her stepfather was a dick, but it's pretty much as far as it went. 
it might have been implied that he was abusive, but yeah, yeah, it never went further than Mm-mm. being implied. Amanda said your stepdad's a, like a cock. Is that new news to us? Yeah, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, really, all of Lily's problems were caused by Lily. Yes, they showed his hand when they had Amanda tell Lily that she, you know, just obviously lacked empathy. Mm-hmm. And if you're not empathetic, which is interesting because you have Amanda who is just almost like high functioning autism or Asperger's or something, but just her, her demeanor. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, Lily who did, (laughs) but Mm -hmm. she couldn't put herself in anyone else's shoes because she just thought about herself. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And we'll get into that more on my end when we do our breakdowns, which we can do right now if you like. Yes. All right. Let's get into the breakdowns. What was your favorite scene? My favorite scene. And this goes into what I was talking about earlier mm-hmm. as far as the music and also the showing uh, what telling, but not showing. Yeah. Yeah. Was when Lily was waiting for the pictures to come through and she's brushing her teeth and that mm-hmm. music is playing. Mm-hmm. And it was at the moment that the pictures came through, but we never saw them, but the music changed to the point that it yeah. was very much revealing what, yeah. what, what the pictures were. Yeah, good call. It's another example of them not showing us, but still mm-hmm. telling us what was going on. Yes. Good call. And that was just masterful. Yeah. Right there. If I remember right, wasn't it? It was either panning in or out. It was panning in. And then once the ding hit, it stopped. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just great camera work. Great camera work by uh, Corey. Just really well done. And yours? I think my favorite scene, just from a character standpoint, was the interaction between uh, Tim, Amanda, and Lily in the house when they were trying to frame him mm-hmm. into doing it. And that might seem a little subdued in a movie that had so much other stuff going on. But to me, Tim was the audience mm-hmm. in this situation. He was the rational, what the fuck is wrong with you people? If anything, he might have been the only character that would be easy to identify with. Exactly. And I, I like that they use that. And put him in that scene so he could play off of both Lily and Amanda. Mm-hmm. And we could see just how. I get it from Amanda's point of view, but we can see from Lily's, there's something not right going on there. Mm-hmm. I liked the whole interaction from the beginning to the end of the scene. I loved when they interrupted his Ave Maria moment. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool. He could almost buy yes. he could almost buy that he was doing that in his head as he was surveying everything. Mm-hmm. This was his moment, and then they interrupted it. But if you've seen the movie, then you probably know what I'm talking about. It was just the character interaction, because the characters were so strong to me. Yes. We had an identifiable character placed in this void of normalcy, this this sacred deer-like sterilization of reality. Mm -hmm. We felt a heartbeat for a little bit. I just liked the way it uh, went down. Mm -hmm. What was your holy shit moment? I'm trying to, like, think of one. Okay. You go first. Okay. Uh, my holy shit moment just comes. I mean, it's going to be maybe a little cliche this time, but there's a reason. Not that she killed her father. Mm-hmm. Well, yes and no. More than that, she actually not only did she tell Amanda what she was going to do, but she did it. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! You actually fucking did it. You evil fucking person. Mm-hmm. Wow. You selfish, horrible person. Like, you framed your friend. Mm-hmm. And the way they filmed it was great. But that was my whole shit moment. It was just, again, it was the tell, but don't show it. Yeah, that scene was just fantastic. Because with the sound of his machine running yes. upstairs. Yep. And you're waiting for it to stop. Yeah. And that camera is panning in. Uh-huh. And, yeah, yeah. Fantastic choice. And you're waiting to hear the thuds or something from upstairs. Mm-hmm. You're waiting for it. And uh, cool little trivia here. That was filmed in one continuous thing so mm-hmm. when uh anya went upstairs they just put fake blood on her and she came back downstairs awesome and what's cool is this movie was actually written to be a stage play i can totally see yes. that and i would love to see that stage play agreed and so the director said that this that scene was how it would play out on stage mm-hmm. actress would walk off stage get you know it would be implied and then come back mm-hmm. so yeah if you look at it that way you can see this entire movie playing out Mm-hmm. on stage so that that was my holy shit moment i guess mine is 
in ways a companion piece to your holy shit moment. Okay. It would be the moment that Amanda self sacrificed herself. Yeah, yeah, that's up there. You know, when she questions her, you know, do you have a reason to live? And she's like, No. Yeah. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> glug glug so, glug glug glug. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the take one for the team. Yeah, so yours yeah, yours you know, precedes mine and then mine was like, Oh, she's gonna fucking do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh if any, mediocre moment. I guess that would be Lily's near extremely odd suicide temp in the in the pool. Yeah, that was weird. In ways I, I'm wondering if she was just testing Amanda. Hmm. Possibly. To see what her reaction is. You know, still not a hundred percent buying that she is completely emotionless, mm-hmm. but I don't know, it just seemed kinda out of place. Yeah, I I echo those sentiments as well. I didn't think uh, Lily going to the party was necessary. Yes. Agreed on that, too. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that was kind of mediocre. I, I get it established the Tim character, mm-hmm. which, man, they did a good job of making Anton look rough. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that hair was rough. Yeah, I was like, I will remember you as Charlie Bartlett and adorable fucking Chekhov. Mm-hmm. Nothing really happens other than she encounters Tim, which set up his character. But I thought maybe they could have set it up a different way. That's just me nitpicking. Um, but yours is a close second because mine actually had a plot device, and yours can too. But mine had more of one, so maybe yours is more more justified. But it didn't seem as mediocre to me as the party did. Mm-hmm. But I guess if you analyze it, yours might, yours might seem more mediocre because what was the purpose of it at all? Yeah. But, like you said, maybe she was just testing her. And I guess, you know, just to point out to the audience, this is, I think you're probably feeling the same way. This is not so much as a, you know, I really hated that moment. This is just Mm -hmm. a, out of all the moments, that would be the one. Yeah, like the pacing was so on point Mm -hmm. that the lack of pacing for just a scene sticks out. Mm -hmm. So it's more that. If any, LOL moment. That's another hard one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess the closest thing, which I didn't LOL, uh-huh. but just the entire technique conversation. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was interesting. I was thinking about it because it's like humorless black humor. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what's interesting because this movie is built as a comedy, like a mm-hmm. horror comedy or drama horror comedy, if we're going to go any further uh but there's not much comedy no to be had so Mm -hmm. yeah so let's see my lol moment when she when um amanda's first walking in the house Mm -hmm. and she turns to the mirror and just smiles like real briefly Mm -hmm. and then goes back to her like emotionless face that kind of made me chuckle a little bit Mm -hmm. i was like oh haha (laughs) <laughs> you're trying you're pretending <laughs> yeah <laughs> even, even before we knew that you know that was just her personality that's you know mm-hmm. how she was oh and i also did like the entire interaction scene between the two of them and the stepdad when he was like you know come upstairs i want to talk to you yeah that was really awkward yeah <laughs> that was really awkward but they they played it well yeah they did <laughs> so that takes care of our breakdowns uh just some stuff I want to touch on. I loved mm-hmm. the number of fake out moments in this movie. Mm-hmm. When you thought something was going to happen but didn't. Uh, the the scene you mentioned prior about the dad. Mm-hmm. To me, that was a fake out moment. What was going to happen? Um, but they played off of each other, and I like the. Uh, well, I'm going to kind of go off on a little side tangent. I liked the movie more when the character of Lily dropped the the disguise mm-hmm. in front of Amanda and was honest with her. From then on, their interactions were so much more enjoyable. Yes. Because there wasn't that awkward, fake, smiley thing that obviously Lily has had to teach herself. Mm-hmm. Being the actual sociopath of the movie. Yeah, at that point, they no longer had any illusions about exactly. each other. Exactly, yeah, yeah. To me, the movie just got better from there. Mm-hmm. There's more specific stuff in my notes, but I like the just... There's quite a few fake-out moments with the scene where Lily's at the spa with her mother... And then you have Tim trying to break into the house, possibly. The stepdad sees what's going on and, you know, gets up. And the, so that's so that's another fake out moment. Then when the stepdad confronts Lily in the kitchen about her smoking, and we have Amanda right around the corner holding the knife. 
It's another uh, fake out moment. So there was really kind of cool fake out moments in this movie that where you thought something was going to happen, but it just didn't. It was going to go one way and it didn't. And at that moment, I kind of wonder if Amanda was waiting in the corner to – she wasn't quite sure what kind of relationship that Lily had with her stepdad. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking she was out also waiting to see if he would physically hit her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and it was at that moment that Amanda realized that Lily is just selfish. Yeah, spoiled little brat. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else you want to add? You want to go to the notes? Just because you brought it up, another mm-hmm. scene that I liked aesthetically okay. was just that shot of Lily and her mom at the spa, sitting, waiting for their food to come in. It was just very symmetrical. And the music yes. was because it was like that peaceful music on one side. And then it was like super tense on the mm-hmm. other. Yeah, yeah, that was really well done. All right, let's go to Phillips Notes. I was watching it, and I kind of thought to myself, when I watch movies like this, I, I enjoy it so much because it's like I'm molding clay in my mind, mm-hmm. trying to figure out what this is about until it becomes something and I can understand it. Mm-hmm. And that experience is fun for me. And when I get spoilers, the clay has been molded for me already. Mm-hmm. And I don't want that. I want the, the, the formless block of clay in front of me so I can mold it myself. And figure it out on my own. So I kind of wrote about that in my notes because I was like, that's kind of why I don't like spoilers. I guess to put it in a way that doesn't make me sound like I'm just like control freak. <laughs> There's a reason why I don't like spoilers. Mm-hmm. I liked that Amanda, since she had no feelings, she could read others like a book. Yes. Like she just knew what people were because she knew intent. She understood it. Mm-hmm. She couldn't do it herself, but she was so good at mimicking, pretending, mm-hmm. and studying for so long that she just knew why people were doing what they're doing. So when she would ask Lily questions, she was like a cat playing with a toy. Uh-huh. I want to see what you say. I know exactly what you're doing because I can read you. But what are you going to tell me? Yes. And and as far as their relationship goes or as personalities go, I liked that Amanda was 100% you get what you see. Yes, yes. Whereas Lily, who... You know, as far as the wolf and sheep's clothing, you know, she's playing the sheep the entire time, but she is probably the more manipulative. Oh, yeah, easily, out easily. Of the two of them. And I like that. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Another scene that I liked was when Amanda went to hug Lily, but didn't know how to do it right. <laughs> so she thought she was being attacked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and dropped her books. I like that because yeah, that was really cool. It was just like a, a nice moment to really show how much that. Amanda just doesn't understand emotions and contact. And I like the fact that Lily was honest at that point because she's just like, sorry, I thought you were going in for an attack. Yeah. <laughs> and then the hug itself was cool because one was feeling it, the other one wasn't. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was a really cool scene for me. And I will say, as someone that can't stand to be touched. Yes. When huggers go in like that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you kind of tense up. Yes. You're like, hey, oh, we're touching now. Oh, God, we're doing this. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it reminds me of other than, like, having to use the telephone, which I hate doing, mm-hmm. I hate having to give people handshakes because you don't know what fucking kind of handshake you're going to give. Yeah. Is it a business handshake? Is it a cool, like, cool handshake? Is it a dominance handshake? Is it a complicated handshake? Are, yeah. are we doing that weird, like, hug one tap pat on the back thing that guys do because that's all we can show emotions yeah. and interaction with each other will i be able to use my hand after this handshake? <laughs> yeah are you gonna squeeze my hand to death because you need to assert your masculinity on me uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah weird tangent there we had the hugs reminded me of how awkward handshakes are like i can deal with hugs better than i can deal with handshakes mm-hmm. it's just ugh, i don't like them <laughs> i did like the scene where she was teaching her the technique and then dad, dad just kind of walked in <laughs> of step back like what the what, what he must have been thinking <laughs> in his head. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you two? Now they're both creepy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and there's also, I'm going to miss a bunch of them. So many good one-liners. Uh-huh. It, it was a really, really tight script. Amanda says, there's nothing holy about a dick and a vag getting together and spitting out a little dude. <laughs> I was like, yes, thank you. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> I loved it. I was like, thank you. You're speaking to my soul. Another moment that I liked... And, and again, it, it fits the part of Anton's character being the audience mm-hmm. was when the three of them were in the car. And you could just tell how much he was just getting freaked out. Yeah. 
Yeah. By Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he's just like, you have a creepy friend. <laughs> Which was funny because Lily was so good at being the wolf. Yes. In sheep's clothing that she should have been the one that he was freaked out by. Mm-hmm. Which he was later on. <laughs> yeah, but even as the audience, we're the same way. We're like, I, even I was like, man, it's kind of weird. Okay, I don't know how to take this yet. Yes. Then at the end, you're like, oh, man, I called that wrong. But you're supposed to. That's the point. Mm-hmm. That's good writing. The scene where they were uh, down in like the wine cellar area. Well, Amanda brings up, you know, do you ever think about just killing him? And that kind of uh, throws Lily. Mm-hmm. So then Lily asks Amanda to leave. Amanda backs up. The camera backs up. Mm-hmm. And then Lily backs up again, and the camera backs up with her. Like it was timed perfectly. Yes. And then I love the interaction when the dialogue was, Lily says, I want you to leave. Amanda says, I don't get it. Lily says, you don't have to. Mm-hmm. I was like, awesome. That just right there, <laughs> like just that scene. It just it was really well done. Mm-hmm. I loved, I loved this other scene. This is another scene that I really liked. When Lily went to Amanda's house, the way the mom acted. Yeah. <laughs> the mom acted like she herself was freaked out by her daughter. Yeah. It's like, what she do now? <laughs> and then she says, did she do something? Mm-hmm. Perfect. And then we go to a scene where they're walking through the house. And then uh, Lily asks the mom, what is she doing out there? And the mom says, I don't know. <laughs> then it cuts to Amanda standing out in the backyard, staring off into the woods. <laughs> and that's all she's doing. She's not moving. She's just stay- it was it was really cool. I like how they made you think that Amanda was the one that we should be paying attention to. Yeah. And I can't help but think that Amanda may have actually got a happy ending for her. Yeah. Yeah. She's in a controlled environment mm-hmm. and I just think that she's probably like Yeah. This isn't bad. You know, well, I mean, she's probably just like everything else, just meh. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> she knows how to knit. <laughs> she, everything's regulated for her, and it's on a time for her. She doesn't think about anything. She doesn't have to pretend anymore. Mm-hmm. You know? Which might fit, again, what you were saying about her being high on the spectrum. Yeah, yeah. Yep, exactly. I want that concrete chess backyard thingy. Oh my god. That was so cool. <laughs> as soon as that scene happened, I was like, oh, ooh. <laughs> oh, I want that. Really bad. I probably couldn't pick up or move the pieces, but I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Another really awesome quote from Amanda. She says, The only thing worse than being incompetent or unkind or evil is being indecisive. Yes. Great line. And the delivery of that line. Yes. Was- yeah, my delivery is nothing like her flat. Yeah. Just matter of fact delivery. Then when they were at the spa mm-hmm. and having their meal, I wrote, that is the smallest amount of food. <laughs> and it probably costs more than I spend on groceries for the week. That I was thinking is like, I just don't get rich people food. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. I was like, why? How does that make you happy? <laughs> I, I get to pay a lot for not very much. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make any sense. That's not dessert right there. That's that's, that's your meal. <laughs> yeah, that's main course. <laughs> I discussed, I'll bring it up again, though. I love the shot of the footsteps and the outdoor lights turning on. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, it was a great way to sell the scene. Oh, and I remember it was another one of those odd score points when it came to opening up the grill. Mm-hmm. And and the music just got super fucking weird. Right. But I was loving it. Another thing I loved about that scene, in that scene, was when Lily was at the spa and you have that uh it's another fake out moment. You have that moment where she's having like she's getting like a pedicure and she sees her stepdad. Mm-hmm. And then then realizes you know it's not him. But then later on as they're leaving, she sees her stepdad again. But this mm-hmm. time it's actually him. I it, it was like that they're they're trying to fake us out again. So it was like a like fake out fake out. <laughs> like double fake out. Yeah, double <laughs> fake out where oh it's it's actually him this time. Mm-hmm. You know not not another uh, machination of her brain. So I liked that. I thought that was really cool. Kind of like, you know, illusion versus showing the real thing. Yes. Which also plays into their two characters, the illusion mm-hmm. versus the real mm-hmm. thing, where Lily is the illusion, Amanda's the real thing, mm-hmm. which is really what this movie's all about. I grew to really love Amanda's character. There was a scene after the whole bit with the dad in the kitchen and the smoking and Amanda had the knife and then the dad left and they were talking and Amanda's like, hey, you're using the technique. 
And she says, <laughs> I'm not using the technique, Amanda. <laughs> I was like, aw. She's trying to read the situation. I just, I found it endearing almost her inability to gauge actual human emotion from fake. Mm-hmm. Like she couldn't tell that Amanda, or that Lily wasn't faking. I really liked Amanda's character and Olivia did a great job. Yes. And kind of a minor holy shit moment is when uh, Amanda admitted using the technique during Lily's father's funeral. Yes. Of course, she said it matter-of-factly because she would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's again it's that point of Amanda's just almost incapable of lying if you ask the right yeah, questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, true. I know people like that, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's actually uh, very refreshing, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It's just like that, just very, not emotionless, but just matter-of-fact. And, and and if you ask a question, you will get the answer to the question you asked. There's no beating around the bush. There's no bullshit, mm-hmm. you know. You know, I'm not gonna say what I really mean. You're gonna you ask something, you're gonna get the answer. So mm-hmm. make sure you want the answer that you know that you're asking the question for. Yeah, I had a friend that similar in a way she was completely devoid of tact. You know, I just eventually was no longer mad at any things that she said because I just realized anything that she said never really came from a malicious standpoint. It's just that's how she was. Right, right before. Uh, Amanda passes out from drinking the roofie uh, screwdriver. She says, I'm a skilled imitator mm-hmm. and then passes out again. Another, <laughs> another potential fake out moment mm-hmm. because was she just passing out to fake out for the moment? Like her saying, I'm a skilled imitator. And then she imitates sleeping for a minute there. I was like, Hmm. I thought, what if Lily went upstairs to kill the dad and Amanda was gone? Yeah, and and it was another one of those moments that I was talking about that reminded me of Diabolique because when it lingered on Amanda for so long, I was just waiting for her to wake up. Yes, exactly. Yep. And this would be that moment that, you know, she was actually playing Lily all this time. Exactly. Yeah. It was kind of heartbreaking it didn't mm -hmm. because the bad guy won. Yeah. And usually I like movies when the bad guy wins or the bad, you know, the the villainous, the bad girl. But, you know, this time, yeah. Mm hmm. And then just, you know, the, the end in, in memory of Anton Yelchin was very sad. Mm-hmm. And that is all for my notes. Uh, we can talk more about it or we can go to final thoughts. Final thoughts is good. Let's go to final thoughts. I would definitely recommend this movie. Yes. It is a very niche movie, though. Mm-hmm. I can see people not liking this. Yeah, this would, to me, fall in, fall in the same lines of killing of a sacred deer some way's mother i mean it, it's it's not as heavy as those no 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 but it's cerebral it has that feeling too it has it's mm-hmm. real it's really like a companion piece to sacred deer another one it reminded me of black coat's daughter yeah yeah good call yeah definitely yeah yes uh so yeah if you like those kind of movies uh definitely check it out mm-hmm. it's not as tough of a watch like you said it's not as difficult in my opinion, maybe it is for other people. Mm-hmm. This is just our uh, reaction to it. But it was fun to kind of watch the game being played. Exactly. And then you find out how fucking good Lily actually is. Mm-hmm. And it, and it just makes you makes you wonder was after she kills her stepdad and she comes back down and she like lays in Amanda's lap and is crying. Mm-hmm. And the music's playing. Great scene, by the way. Is that the first and only time in the movie we actually see Lily? Yeah. For who she really is. Mm-hmm. Because the next time we see her, she's full on back in wolf and sheep's clothing. Mm-hmm. Talking to Anton. Um, but yeah, I would recommend it. I would say check it out. It's uh, absolutely. It was a very interesting. It was one of those movies. It's like, it's just interesting to think about. And if you're a fan of cinematography and camera use, mm-hmm. definitely check it out. Watch out for this director. Mm-hmm. If this is what he has to offer us first, then yeah, watch out for this guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that takes care of final thoughts then. But before we go, as it pertains to Thoroughbreds, what did we learn? You can't always... I mean, it's it's a basic lesson, mm-hmm. but it's very appropriate for the movie. You can't always judge a book by its cover. Definitely, definitely. Uh, mine goes in hand with that, though. Sometimes you should just let them drown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you for listening. Tell us what you thought of the movie in the comments below. Did you find it as intriguing and cerebral and interesting as we did? 
or did you for some reason think it was a letdown? And if so, why? If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends or cool people who might dig the podcast. And please subscribe to the channel, including hitting that notification bell to stay up to date on the newest content. Speaking of, our next podcast will be on the movie Tomb Raider, the newest one. Uh, I'm very excited about it because I'm a huge Tomb Raider fan. Uh, uh, I played Tomb Raider, I'm going to age myself here, back in the day on the Sega, uh, maybe Saturn. No, maybe Sega CD. It was back in the day. It was yes. it was, it was was like the before Tomb Raider. I think it was before Tomb Raider hit PS1. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't like the Sega system because I was playing it at a friend's house. And the Tomb Raider came out and I bought a PS1 and I bought Tomb Raider and I enjoyed it and I'm very happy. And so, yeah, Tomb Raider, we're doing a big movie <laughs> next week. So awesome. <laughs> so until then, once again, my name is Philip. And I'm TJ. And we will be back next time to talk about the adventures of Lara Croft in Tomb Raider. Goodbye. Bye.